you have spent thousands of hours on this platform and at one point you either wanted to become a YouTuber or you just wondered how much do YouTubers earn. And then you go online and you see these articles and they show you that you earn roughly one to three dollars per 1000 views. Well, these are not remotely close to reality. And now that you search for that, of course, the algorithm will recommend videos to you where someone shows off what they earn and you check that out. And let's say that's a gaming channel and you also want to make gaming content. Maybe that person earns five dollars per 1000 views, then you do it yourself and yours is at two dollars or maybe even at eight yeah that person kind of forgot to mention how many factors go into what you actually earn just because a main part of this video is that it's about a new youtube channel i want to give you a quick overview of who i am i'm dex and i started doing youtube in january 2011 and on this channel here after a very long break i decided to upload all twitch vod since around may 2021 and i pretty much only use the channel as an archive now if you Fast forward to the 18th of January 2022, which is also the oldest video public on my channel. At that point, I was thanking my 15 subscribers that they decided to join this channel. And then Vampire Survivors came along. One of these archives shot up incredibly fast to like 8,000 views, which at that time I got like one to two views per video. So that was incredible. And I remember having a talk with my girlfriend and we came to the conclusion that I should start editing my videos again. So that was the point where I turned from being a streamer over to being a YouTuber. I will talk about three main things in this video. Number one, the revenue from YouTube. Number two, the revenue from other income streams. And number three, how much money is actually left over after you deducted everything. Now the opposite of what you usually hear, if you only came for this video, don't subscribe, please. I don't frequently make this type of content. I make gaming content, so you're free to check it out. But if you decide to subscribe because of this video, please, please stay away, okay? In the first instance, I will only talk about my channel and show the stats for the things that I talk about. But in that part, the only goal is that you understand the metrics that exist behind YouTube. And after that, we will talk about whether or not you can apply these metrics that you see there to figure out how much other channels earn. First of all, what maybe should be mentioned is that YouTube takes a cut on everything that exists on its platform. However, you don't get to see that like the values that you see are the final values after their cut. So this doesn't matter for anything. There's a myth that keeps popping up from time to time, which is that you get paid in the amount of subscribers that you have. And for payments, subscribers mean nothing. The only thing that matters is how many ads a person sees and this rather refers to watch time but then dumps down into views. Technically speaking, a few doesn't have to earn you something if they don't see ads. Maybe that there's nothing available or they just don't watch long enough because they click on the video and click away. I've now pulled up a random video to explain to you how all of the revenue is put together. And you may see that there are a couple of confusing things and I will go over them one by one that you fully understand what they mean. The easiest part is the revenue sources. This is just how much you earn based on ads and how much you earn from premium. I I once tried to calculate how much YouTubers earn with premium. And even if you assume that YouTube gives away 50% of what they earn from it, which I don't believe is the case, an average person actually ends up losing money for a YouTuber. And I view this from the perspective of a gaming content creator, which is in the lowest third of least earning channels. So here you would expect that a set value would be the best. So you can imagine how bad it is for other categories, especially those that only upload once a month, since everything is based on watch time. Now let's go over these values at the top here. CPM is what advertisers pay per 1000 views of their ads. RPM is the revenue per 1000 clicks. There's a very big misunderstanding that RPM is just based on the CPM. This is true to the most part, since the higher the advertisement costs are, the more you'll earn out of them. But this literally means revenue per 1000 clicks. So let's say, for example, a person comes to your video, it's the only viewer, and they super chat for $1,000, then the RPM of that video is 1 million, because the one view is worth $1,000. YouTubers that live stream often will also know that, that the RPM tends to shoot up like crazy when they take a look at the live streams. If you don't believe me, here you can actually see a video that reached an RPM of 7,500. And if you check out the number at the very top, you'll see that the CPM is only at 6 euros, while the RPM 
RPM is close to 14 euros, while the usual video RPM at that time was around 4 euros. And finally we have the revenue. The revenue is literally what you will earn. There are no more cuts that will apply, at least on the YouTube platform. And depending on how your country does it, you either get this untaxed or there are some deductions that happen there. Though just because you get it untaxed doesn't mean you don't have to tax it. That should be obvious. Now I would like to take a look at two of my most watched videos as well as my highest earner. And this is where it becomes complicated to just apply logic to a number that you see. As you can see this video here got 350,000 views but only 229 euros. Clicking over at the revenue tab, you can see that the RPM is almost half a euro, which is completely horrible. And the reason is quite simple. This video here is a four minute video. Four minute videos don't get mid rolls. For this, they have to be at least eight minutes long, though I will get into the ad segment later. But I think it's needless to say that just because you have a lot of views doesn't mean that you automatically earn a ton of money. Obviously, 229 euros is a lot of money, but for 350,000 views, that is a joke. Next up, we have another video that has roughly 90,000 views less. And it earns 670 euros, so three times as much, but this video is 45 minutes long. Not only does it get mid-roll ads, but the longer videos are, the more they tend to earn, as there are more chances to show multiple ads. And for that, a 255 RPM is ridiculously bad. Now here you will notice, the share of premium is very high, Simply because this up here is so bad that the YouTube split that you get on a long video becomes better and better. And now finally here we have my highest earner, not per views but in total. With 250,000 views this crossed 1000 euros. The RPM is 428 which is actually a very very solid RPM. At least if you consider gaming content, I think this is the perfect introduction to start talking about what changes the amount of money that you earn per 1000 views. And I will first go into the more detailed ones and later on to the ones that you can't influence like time of the year. We have a video here about Protato, a game that does insanely well on my channel and it has 32,000 views in 4 days and earned 181 euros. Now if you paid attention to the past stats then you'll know this is an incredibly high amount and if you go over to revenue you'll see it's 7 euros. This is not what I currently earn across all videos. As you can see, the RPM on this video over here is only 5.28 and the RPM on another game that I play a lot called Vampire Survivors is even worse than this. But where's this difference coming from? Because I'm a gaming content YouTuber and everyone always says that it's depending on the category. So shouldn't the same thing apply to all of them? Well, no, it doesn't. That's a reality. Now, first of all, advertisers can choose between two things. Either they target specific categories or they target specific people. This refers to the ad profile that Google gathers on their users. And while, for example, someone interested into gaming will, of course, go for gaming channels, some of the games also draw in more people that are rather into finance, so they see financial ads even on gaming content, and those end up having a higher RPM. Taking a look at the audience tab also gives us valuable information that determines on how much the advertisers will pay. First of all, the group 25 to 34 is the most lucrative one as males, since most advertisements happen to them. But this again depends on which niche you are in and also how many competitors you have. Compare for example finance and gaming. Every single person can make a gaming channel. The entry level is very low and this leads to an abundance of gaming content. But if you go over to finance, yes technically everyone can start it but most of them are sorted out very quickly because they just don't have the know-how or the interesting topics for it. The next thing is the top demographic. The United States is usually by far the one that earns you the most and on average I think most people have 40%. For me this is lower. And my second largest audience is Germany. Now you will very quickly see why the RPM on this video here is so much worse compared to the other one. Let's go over here, let's take a look at the audience and as you can see the highest share here is Germany. While Germany has a lower CPM than United States, it's roughly 25% less. It's still in the top ranks of all countries, like in the top 10. And it shouldn't be forgotten that just because this has 17%, this doesn't mean that United States viewers left, but just their share of the whole cake has become less. 
There's by the way a lot more that goes into it, but the most important part is where people are from and then to what age group and to what gender they belong to. So all in all, to summarize, it doesn't just depend on what you upload, but it rather depends on all the factors of the audience that is drawn into this particular video or to your particular video types, or of course to you as a person. Note that for some of the channels, the RPM can be as high as 40 to 60 euros, where I have 7 right now. This just depends on having the right group and the right topics. Though those that usually have a higher RPM are also unable to upload as many videos as I do, since I upload 1 to 2 videos a day, while they rather tend to upload 1 video a week. For this it should be noted that upload frequency has nothing to do with how much you will earn. So just because you take an entire month to make a highly produced animation video, you know the drill at this point, doesn't mean this will earn a lot. It will all depend on the people watching it, which at this point is a small reminder to show some love to the people that you constantly watch but rarely upload. Now here's the next factor. It's about the average view duration and I will get into the ads next up. The longer people watch your videos, the more likely they are to see ads. Now this again depends on which category you belong to. For gaming, you can expect that on a 30 minute video you will maybe see two ads in total, though I'm talking about ad slots. Ad slots refer to times where ads are played and those may be multiples. And this is one of the main reasons why retention matters a lot on YouTube. I mean there are a lot of other reasons why this matters, but that has rather to do with content creation and YouTube performance and not with earnings, so I will skip them. Now I want to warn you ahead of time because you'll see something that upsets you. Okay, I'll go into the editor and you'll see how many ad slots are placed. That looks really horrible, doesn't it? Because I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 ads that I placed here. Well, no, those are not ads. These are ad slots where you tell the algorithm, hey, I, I found a spot where people can take a look at it. And this follows a strategy that is recommended to YouTubers. It even reads here that note that ad breaks don't guarantee ads will appear for every viewer. Not only that, but most of the times they won't see ads. And just for reference point, before I started doing it and I just let YouTube do its automatic placement. In fact, can I maybe just click this and see what happens? Yeah, do you see that? We have two slots here. Now two slots would be more than fine if they would play ads. And if YouTube has an ad available and would like to play it, but there's no slot close by, then you will simply not receive the ad. That was it, it will go to someone else. That may sound confusing and I forgot to mention that. Down here you can see that all the ads are auctioned. This means those are things that happen in the moment and whoever pays the most will appear in a video. But this also means that if you have nothing available right now when something is needed, it will just go somewhere else. Here we are quickly checking out the CPM and RPM of a video. Just based on that example, we can actually know how many ads are seen. If this is what an advertiser has to pay for 1000 ads, and this is what we get, then 4 out of 10 people that watch the video will see an ad. Now, as I've explained, RPM is a little bit more complicated, so reality probably looks a bit different. But based on surveys that I did in the past, as well as tests where I let the videos run on different devices in private mode, this is not far off from reality. And now that we are done talking about the detailed things that you can more or less influence, now we have something that you can't influence. For starters, it's obviously the current world situation, so if everything is going worse economy-wise, but we are not talking about people, instead about companies, how much they are spending. And the second one is financial quarters. Each quarter is three months long, duh. And while this may look different for other YouTubers on how aggressive this change is, it follows a similar line. So I got monetized on the 16th of February. And my RPM at the beginning was down to 130-ish. After I changed to the ad strategy that I just talked about, it went up to 264. But this is not the RPM that every video would get, because keep in mind one of my best performing videos, the one with 350,000 views, has a horrible RPM of 60 cents and drags down this average like crazy. Pretty much the moment you get to the end of March, which is over here, the next quarter starts and this is usually always when you see a drop, either through the entire month or just for some weeks. You will see constant jumps up and down and the best thing that you should do is just draw a line through them and then you can see trend lines. Towards the end of the second quarter, and this is starting with the end of May, you can see that it jumped up like crazy and hitting new peaks here at 5 euros almost. 
And the moment it goes into the third quarter, this means at the end of June, bam, it jumps down like crazy again. The end of the third quarter is September. Here's a big nosedive. I am not too sure what exactly happened here, but I do upload different content. And if this was short form content that did really well, then this would explain why the average got dragged down so much. Towards the end of September, we can see that the average is relatively high. And once we go over to October, we can see that there are another couple drops. But this should not be overestimated because the final quarter in the year is where all the companies have their money left over, where they exactly know what they can spend off their budget, and they go crazy. This is also mostly for Christmas advertisement. And as you can see, this just keeps going up and reaches ridiculous values. The closer you get to Christmas, the higher this will become. And the moment Christmas is over, so even before you hit January, this drops down like crazy. January will be incredibly low. I expect something around two euros for my channel, maybe, if not lower. And this is usually the time where YouTubers decide to take a break. And that is also the same decision that I made that I will only upload a video maybe once every day or once every second day. So to finish this whole segment off, how do I now know how much other YouTubers earn? You simply can't. You would need to know what kind of audience is watching them, but not just where they are coming from, the age and the gender, but you would also need to know what things they are interested in so you know what kind of ads are shown to them. Usually you can apply a relatively simple logic the more you can earn per user if they follow the ad, the more the ads are valued. So as I mentioned, finance is very high, gaming is relatively low, and then everything in between also depends on the time of the year, where some will just earn multiples compared to others where it just goes up by 20-30%. And as I mentioned earlier, it also just depends on how many people do this type of content. To keep the segment shorter, I will not explain every little detail that you see on the screen. In fact, I will not cover the things that I already talked about and explained. And instead, I will just explain on what happened on my YouTube channel or surrounding it that led to this increase or decrease in views. So here you can see November and December. This is what it looked like in 2021 with the VODs that I uploaded. And in January, this was where the VOD caught a lot of attention, at least for my channel size. And I started editing videos. February was the month where I got monetized on the 16th, though I only earned 1 euro there. So this is from the 17th to the 28th. It should be noted that the RPM considers the entire month, so for more than half of the month it has a zero in there to calculate the average you see in front of you. So don't take this value all too serious. In March there was a slight increase in views, but it's pretty much according to the trend line. The 1.1 million there earned me 3,000 euros. Now April was a ginormous jump and the main reason for that is a ginormous streamer called Asmongold started playing Vampire Survivors. And with every Vampire Survivors YouTuber I talked, I saw a huge bump in subscribers, in views and everything. And that month earned me nearly 5,000 euros. May was my highest earning month at 2.3 million views and 7,200 euros. This number is absolutely ridiculous and at this point it kind of settled in that YouTube is very different to a job in regards to money. Like what I mainly learned at a job is there are pay brackets that you are in and you can move anywhere in between there but you don't really get below the lowest point and you can't get above the highest point unless something special happens. And for YouTube there is no limit upwards but also no limit downwards. An additional reason for the huge amount of views in April and May is that this streamer Asmongold watch two of my guides live on his stream to I think 40 to 60 thousand people which brought in a lot of views and subscribers over the course of the time. And up until this day I get comments of people telling me that they came from Asmongold. Now June was the first month that declined and the decline was quite hard. I mean obviously I couldn't expect that it would keep going like this but this was below the value in April and at this point I started getting really concerned that if I stick to Vampire Survivors which is a rather short lived game it's nothing that you can play forever then people will lose interest and the channel will just die out. But needless to say nearly 1.8 million views is still a ton and that month earned me 6.2k euros. Now hitting July this was the time where I mostly uploaded two videos a day. One video that is non-vampire survivors related but similar to it 
And the second video is then Vampire Survivors. The goal was that my frequent viewers that are only interested in Vampire Survivors stumble upon the other content and may see, okay, this Dex is actually kind of nice, I want to watch him, and it's less about just coming for the game. It didn't help the views because as you can see, it's down to 1.4 million, and that month earned me 4.3k. Then August came around and something surprising happened. I noticed that a lot of my Vampire Survivors videos managed to get up to 20,000 views, which was quite surprising, that didn't make a lot of sense. But while it's almost the same as July view-wise, it earned me 500 euros more at 5.8k. September continued a trend of falling down pretty much where August should have been in between. At 1 million views I earned 3.8k, and this was the time where I expected that my next month will be below 1 million views, and this is kind of the critical area since the average income in Germany is 4k, but with YouTube you have more expenses than if you earn normally, meaning if I want to compete with my job, I'd rather have to be closer to the 1.4 million threshold and not to the 1 million view threshold. This of course highly depends on where you're living, how high your expenses are, how many taxes you have to pay, if you have to pay taxes for multiple things, and as the final month we have October. Thanks to the German YouTuber Hand of Blood giving me a shout out, as well as Potato being overall very successful on YouTube, there was a ginormous increase in views of 70%. The watch time pretty much went up the same way, but the biggest difference is the RPM. As you can see hitting the final quarter, this goes up by quite a lot since Christmas, Halloween. All in all, there's a huge difference since now the companies can spend the rest of the budget in this final quarter. This led to my best month in regards to earnings and subscriber growth. Talking about the rest of the year, I obviously don't know what's coming. I do expect that November will actually be less overall in performance, and December will go back even more since Protato pretty much experiences right now what I already had with Vampire Survivors. But the nice and also the kinda ugly thing about YouTube is, you never know what to expect. So this segment is about the working hours and I honestly considered a lot how I should do this and I went towards the direction of talking about what my expectations were versus the reality, how much time I actually put into YouTube and the issues that came along with it. But this doesn't fit a video about finances and would rather be a video about being a YouTuber and of course to a part highly subjective. So instead to keep it simple, usually per day I work around 8 to 17 hours, this highly depends on what is going on and also how motivated I am. There are some unexpected issues that came with it and as you can see here, pretty much the moment I started the channel, my daily sleep dropped down by a lot and my entire average is pulled down. This is obviously nothing good, but the point that I want to make is that there is a long transition phase that when you have a normal job and then you also have YouTube, but you want to dedicate YouTube enough time for the growth and that you can have it as a job in the future, then it's really hard to find a balance. I think the best advice to my past self would have been to pay more attention to the sleeping schedule because now I have a problem where I simply can't sleep more. Like even when I have a free day and can just sleep, after five to six hours I automatically wake up and it causes some issues for YouTube where I can't properly record or things like this. So if there is anything I want you to take away from this, it's not the working hours that can be put in because again, these are subjective based on what you're doing and also how much you're willing to give, but rather have your health as a priority number one and all the rest comes after that. Now talking about additional revenue sources, I will just list them on the screen because there's nothing all too exciting to say about them. You have to decide for yourself if you want to do them or not. But one thing should be said, the bigger you become, the more interested sponsors tend to become and the bigger part of the cake they take up of what you earn monthly. This is obviously not always the case and highly depends on what your channel is about. Like like in my case for gaming, I usually tend to turn down most of the sponsorships, either because they are not fitting or because I deem them as what I would call a potential risk, you know, something that is addictive or something that is about play this game and earn crypto and things like this. This is just nothing that I want to have on my channel. Now, I would not look down on someone who takes this. YouTube is a huge risk that you take and you may throw your entire life away since you quit your main job and you stop progressing in life 
life pretty much. YouTube should really be viewed as a break from the working market and if you apply later on, it will not help you at all if you state that you had two or three or four years on YouTube. Pretty much all the other side will see is, okay, you worked in a similar field in the past, then you had a break over multiple years and now you just want to get back in. Good luck with that. So what I want to get at is use these, make sure that you save up your money, but don't sell your soul for it. It's not worth it. And now for the final segment and this is a bit complicated since this depends on where you live and maybe even the state that you're living in. So I will just talk about my experience what went wrong for me. First of all, I needed to found a business the moment I started earning money with YouTube. I didn't know that and had to pay a fee. That is probably not the case for you, but uh, make sure that you inform yourself properly. Also make sure that you go to a tax advisor that is dedicated for YouTubers or at least very knowledgeable in that field. If you go to a normal one, it is way harder to explain to them what you're doing and also the stuff that you receive for free and all the other things that you may have to deduct or at least tax. In my case, any gift that I get, including game keys and other things, I need an invoice for them that state how much value they have and then I have to pay 19% of that in taxes, which is just the value of income tax Germans pay. Then there's another thing since I had to found the business, I have to pay a business tax this is 3.5% multiplied with a leverage of 2 to 9 depending on where you live. By not going too much into detail, my income is reduced by 35% just because of taxes. Then there are obviously other expenses that you have to pay like health insurance, any sort of other insurance that was previously paid by your employer, costs like electricity and whatever else comes along like buying an upgrade for your computer, hardware and things like this. Usually you can get them back via the tax return, but again, inform yourself. Here for me in Germany, there is an issue that where I work technically doesn't count as a workplace. And by technically, I mean it doesn't. So I can't deduct these things because it's a private living room. And that's quite annoying. All in all, my expenses are right now pretty much 50% of what I earn on YouTube. Just talking about the things that go away monthly. And the other 50% are then left over. And that was it. There's no more to say. I know not the most entertaining video because I'm just running down everything. I hope you still learned something that interested you. Or maybe you can take something away for yourself for the future for YouTube. If you are into gaming content, then maybe see you again in the future. And else, still thank you for watching this video and I'm out.